Okay, I wanted to give one quick tip here for anybody out there wondering just how the main sensor influences a coin if you do not decide to buy the wands with the Sigma, Sigma Metalytics. If you are crazy enough to spend, I don't know, $600 on the unit alone but not get the wands, I think I've seen people charging $150 for the wands, maybe some $200. I want to show you what happens. This is a silver dime. If you get just the main sensor, I'm in measurement mode right here. It's 90% silver dime. Comes up as 2.00, 1.99, just kind of fluctuating. But let me show you what happens when you go slightly off center, which you can be. 2.46, 2.9, 3.2. It's coming up into the copper range, showing more and more resistance. 4.5, 4.8, 5.0. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 7, 23, you got to 23 and then it totally went off the chart. These coins, I'll show you again, I want to explain this mathematically, or at least with my mathematical theory on how this works. Silver Eagle, 999 silver, right? And this is a coin that was designed to be put on this thing. It was designed for the main sensor because it's got such a large diameter. They've got this millimeter count right here. 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 60 millimeters. This coin comes up pretty much perfectly, 1.07. I mean 1.70, my bad. Now, if you move it up or down, let's move it down, 1.69. Ooh, that's interesting, it dropped. Ooh, there we go, got movement right about there. Okay, once it's off-center enough, 1.748, 1.92. Two point nine three. Wonder how three and a half, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, fifteen. Oh, we got to fifteen, then it quit. Then you move it up, and the same thing happens. It bottoms out, it hits the bottom, and then it starts rising again. Yep. Oh, I actually hit the actual plastic top of the verifier and it wouldn't even that's kind of amusing okay so literally this thing would not even allow me so let's move it sideways and see what happens probably the same phenomenon right and two three four twelve thirteen quit one point seven two three four seven twelve and it quits so it's got a margin of error, but that's only because the diameter is so big. You take a coin with a very tiny diameter, this thing's only, I think, 18 millimeters in diameter, 17 point something millimeters. Yeah, it's about 18. Versus a 40 millimeter coin, it's twice the diameter, over twice. It just doesn't even ring, this, it doesn't even register the same. So, this coin is much less margin for error because it is so much smaller. So if you take the wand you're supposed to on this coin, the small wand, plug it into the wand port, registers the new wand, run cal, and hold on just one quick second. On a coin, this has a, a thickness of 1.22 millimeters and it. it's got a diameter of between 1. Point. It is a silver alloy. It is about it's in that range, I believe. It's got a diameter that's so small you got to use a small one. It doesn't actually recommend using the calibration disc. That was what I was trying to get at. There is no C on this, even though it falls within that margin. Let's see what happens if I measure it without a calibration disc. Silver dime. Play sample. 1.87, 1.88. Another thing that can occur is if the relief of the coin is high, and they say this in the instructions too, it can influence it. And if you grab a coin too much, you heat it up, you increase its thermal, you, you can actually increase or alter its electrical conductivity in that moment, I, I believe. I mean, the, the instructions seem to... This comes down to science, and I'm not a scientific expert here, but I'm trying. Um, they said if it, you get the coin warm, and to my understanding, silver is a conductive metal, and you grab it in your hands long enough, it does warm up. You hold any coin in your hand, it gets warmer. Unless you're, I don't know, in the Arctic tundra. So uh, hold it by the rim as much as possible. Put it against it. 
1.94. Okay, that's a good measurement. Move the measuring wand around a little bit, 1.94, 1.93, 1.95. I'm holding it against the reverse. That's my advice for anybody that buys these. The reverse is much flatter than the obverse on the FDR dimes. So, I like to hold it by the reverse, 1.95. Okay, but you see the measurements we're getting on this damn thing. Hold on, this thing, the main sensor. Play sample. 2.09. It's it's different. It's not dramatically different like a nickel. You know, these 100% nickel Canadian coins. Which brings up 136. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy high. So the differences are s significantly more minute, but they're still there. 2.00. It's pretty close. It's very close. You have to get it within the circle here. These are actual references to where the sensor is placed and so you have to have that spatial the axis the axes have to be aligned perfectly for the center of the coin in the x and y and also even the z you, because you start bringing this thing further and further away it's going to be less and less accurate yeah see i've got it at an angle i'm holding it up slightly and it's at 3.9 3.89 3.87 I bring it closer and closer, lower it, lower it more, and it gets more and more conductive. So, anyway, interesting stuff, right?